Hello, it's Nigel Bowden here. Just want to spend a few minutes looking at the uh, Windows 10 Wi-Fi scanning application called Win5. It's created by Helga Keck, uh, who uh, hails out of Frankfurt in Germany. I uh, released it a few months ago now uh, for free on, on Windows 10. It's been widely embraced by the Wi-Fi community. It's taken a lot of input from the community to come up with a real professional level tool uh, for Wi-Fi scanning. I just want to spend a few minutes looking at, I've got a few favorite features in there that uh, that I'm particularly interested in. Just wanted to share those in case you haven't actually seen those as such. Uh, I've actually got the application installed on my local laptop here. I literally just installed it, click next, 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 and uh, it's installed. doesn't need any additional drivers, just use the internal NIC card of the uh, Windows laptop tried it on a few laptops, it's worked on all of them, uh, really is very straightforward to get to uh, to get going, doesn't need any additional drivers or special NIC cards. Um, so we're actually scanning here, you can see it's scanning my uh, local environment here, I've got my uh, home network, a few uh, bits and pieces in my house and uh, some of my neighboring networks that you can see here and um, yeah, this is the sort of default screen you get dropped into when you open the application. I was going to step through uh, some of the various controls and screens in here uh, and then just show you one of my favorite features. Um, at the top we've actually got three tabs here, we've got Analyze, Archive and Forum. We're actually in the Analyze tab here which is probably the main area where you'll spend most of your time working with the application. Um, we'll take a look at Archive uh, a little bit later on. Also at the top here we've got a couple of uh, quick filters if we just want to look at the 2.4 GHz network I can just click on the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, just filters for 5 GHz and then we've got um, all networks and as you, as you can see as I click on each of those as well as the main data grid here uh, we also get corresponding filtering of the spectrum plot which we're showing at the bottom there which is uh, which is uh, very nice indeed so I'm just going to run through some of these uh, controls so we can uh, just understand what we're looking at uh, and then dive into a couple of my favorite features um, if we look at the second uh, row down here uh, we've actually got a, a little uh, control here to stop and start scanning uh, if we want to stop the scan and save uh, sessions off we can, we can do that we've got uh, a dialog box here which is showing us that we're using our internal uh, Wi-Fi NIC uh, to do the scanning with and we can see actually the NIC is actually currently connected to my local network We've got a dialog box here which is showing us the status of scanning. Uh, then we've got a control here which we can uh, click on which actually allows us to do um, uh, a level of filtering by grouping columns together which is a very powerful feature actually. If I actually take one of these uh, headers here, drag it into the grouping section we can actually see that the display, the data display at the bottom here gets grouped uh, by whatever column we've selected. So I selected vendor name so now we can see the basic IDs that correspond to different vendors all grouped together and you can drag in a number of column headers and build up some quite complex expressions uh, so that can be uh, incredibly uh, powerful uh, for filtering and visualizing data. Uh, if I then click on this uh, little filter icon here, we get the uh, draw open up on the left hand side which allows us to filter the data that we're looking at. This is all happening in real time, um, so I can for instance uh, open up the channel numbers here and I just want to see the SSIDs, uh, the SSIDs which are shown on channel 1, 3 and 6 there and you can see that the data grid on the right hand side uh, corresponds to the filters that I've selected and also at the same time the spectrum plot at the bottom is filtered in the same way which is uh, which is a really nice feature and if we want to clear those out just hit the X uh, there and that clears out that uh, filter. Uh, just have a quick look to see if we've got many networks on 80 megahertz in my environment. Yes we have unfortunately. Uh, a couple of these I have to hold my hand up and say I'm guilty. It's my local uh, Belkin meshing system. So um, so yeah that's again very powerful uh, feature. Oh one little side note with that. If we actually select one of the BSSIDs here uh, you can see at the bottom the spectrum plot is showing the, uh, the networks which are selected. But we've got this really nice little dotted line here and what this is actually showing us, because this is an 80 megahertz channel uh, it's actually showing us which of those channels is the primary channel in that channel grouping where we broadcast our BSSIDs etc. So that's uh, just a nice nice little feature, I really, uh, really like that touch. Uh, so if I just close those off now, I've deselected all of the filters um, 
the uh, next control along is the information panel if I click that you can see it just clicks off that main information area at the bottom there uh, generally I operate the tool with uh, that uh, in view but if you want to uh, get rid of that for some reason if you've got a very long uh, data grid listing you want to scroll through you can sort of pop that out of view um, as well as the spectrum uh, plot in that um, area we've also got uh, the parameter section where we can select on individual networks and we can have a look at the uh, detail on the information elements that are pulled out of the, the beacon frames uh, which which advertise those particular networks so if you're into your wireless analysis you can really get some fine-grained deep in information there which is uh, really useful you know as a, as a wireless uh, wireless professional uh, you can also click on the history um, tab here and we can have a look at the uh, in this case the RSSI of this particular SSID over time and you can select SNR and a couple of other um, uh, uh, selectors there which can be useful uh, we've got a uh, dashboard uh, view here where we can look at the rate SNR RSSI of the particular um, network we've got selected we've got signals here so we can see on bar graphs some of the uh, signal characteristics of the network again and also we've got a, um, a note section where we can actually add some notes against this particular BSS ID and if you save those off uh, as part of a session file they'll be saved for future reference which can uh, can be quite nice as well. Uh, next control that we've got along the top here is the uh, settings uh, area and this is where we set the global operation and the look and feel of the application so uh, just to give you an idea here quite like this one if we want to just if we've got a very wide uh, number of columns that we want to look through we can actually freeze some so I'll freeze the first three columns and you can see now that those are frozen which is nice if you want to sort of keep the SSID name in view and then scroll along and see some uh, detailed information um, about that particular network I just change that back to normal. Uh, we've also, I've talked a number of times about these columns. We've got a phenomenal number of columns we can bring into view and, and really see some deep information about each of the networks. So if I just open that up and then scroll down, you can see the, uh, the, the column names that are ticked at the moment. It's the one that I've got in view and I can just go down and select any of those, bring them into my view and, and so it enables me to see more information. So if I click on noise there you see the noise column there has popped into view and I can deselect that uh, just to, to get rid of that again. But uh, you know that is incredibly powerful and, and the number of columns we've got access to the level of information is is, is incredible <laughs> so um, so I'm sure that's something that you'd enjoy having a look through and, and pulling out um, you know lots of detailed information about the networks that you're investigating um, we've also got a quick filter uh, area here which I really like so for instance if I just want to look at my local networks I know they all start with hang on a second VM202 oh there we go I'm having a few problems with my sausage fingers here for some reason there we go uh, and now we've just got a, a filtered view of my uh, SSIDs in my local area so for instance if you were using this on, on a very large network if you're only interested in looking at your corporate SSIDs you could just type your SSID name in there and that would filter it down get rid of a lot of the noise in your environment that you're not too interested in potentially uh, we've got another uh, uh, a few other um, uh, fields that we can uh, actually uh, uh, filter on and uh, this is just a sort of partial matching um, filter here so you only have to type in the first few characters which is uh, which is a really nice feature I really like that um, so we can just take that one out of view now and uh, I think that's covered all of the uh, the main sort of controls that I wanted to take a look at uh, it, it, you know, so just to sort of use this on a day-to-day -day basis. Just want to dive now into a couple of my uh, favourite features. The first one, I've got a piece of paper with it all written down, so don't forget any, forget anything. Uh, the first one is uh, profiles, and so this select we've got at the end here, which says default view. Um, this is actually uh, very similar to the feature that you get in Wireshark. If you've ever used that before, you can create profiles where you actually uh, control the look and the feel of uh, your GUI so you can define, decide which columns you want, what order you want them in, apply some coloration, things like that. We've got the very similar sort of features uh, in WinFi. 
so that you can customize the view for your particular environment with the columns you you know particularly like to see when you're doing troubleshooting save that as a profile and then just flip straight over to it and instantly get your you know your customized view of uh, of this of the uh, environment that you're scanning so just to sort of run through uh, a couple of those uh, by default you use the default view surprise surprise and um, we've got a few of the canned reports here we, uh, sorry canned uh, profiles here which you can select um, and so if I select the pro uh, um, profile you can see the view completely changes the columns that we've got the order of the columns uh, is is customized to give you a slightly different view that perhaps a, a Wi-Fi Pro might be interested in with uh, you know interested in things like channel widths and what uh, 8211 Fi technology you know so as I say you can sort of customize this however you like and uh, what I'm actually going to do is just create a, a very quick profile just to show you how this works I'm actually just going to show one that filters um, uh, for for my environment and they just flip between them so if I just want to show my uh, local SSIDs here in a profile I literally just do uh, create new profile profile I'll select put a, a little name for it my nets hit return there we go and then what I can do now is customize the view to uh, whatever I want that to be so I shall put VM 202 in there and this is one of the beauties of profiles is your filtering selections are saved so that filter uh, entry I've just entered there will be saved as part of the profile so I'll literally do it now do uh, save profile changes and then so if I just flip back to the default view so you can see we go back to visualizing the data in the way we did when we first opened the application but then if I decide well I really want to know what's going on my networks and I don't want to have to fiddle around putting lots of filters in I just click on my nets and boom away we go um, and as I say you can sort of slice and dice that however you like adding in different columns changing the orders of them uh, adding filters it's incredibly powerful I really like that feature um, and this is something that you know potentially you can actually export those profiles so you can actually export maybe set up some views export them send them to a customer who can put them on there and have their own customized view of their particular world so you know the, the sky's the limit on that one I really really like that feature um, the other feature I really want to take a quick look at as well is if we remember we talked about these tabs at the top if we could click on the archive section here uh, we've actually got uh, a number of uh, recordings of previous sessions that we've done in fact I've actually uh, already ruined my own demo let me just uh, delete this old session that I'm going to pull in in a moment but what this area shows us is the uh, previous sessions that we've done we can see when they were done the number of scans that were done and we can actually add uh, annotations to them and you can see I've added a couple here uh, so I can uh, put something in there and and then when you've got a whole list of these things that build up over time you can see exactly what you were doing at that particular time but the thing I really like is you can import and export these so this is a fantastic support tool at the top here you've got a number of buttons you've got a export you've got import and you've got clear sessions uh, but I've actually got a if I just pull this to one side I've actually got a session from a shopping mall I visited a while back and I've just pulled that from my desktop into the sessions area here which is really cool and um, and then I can actually open that up and you can see I've put a description in there uh, where I was actually taking the, um, uh, the, the, the scan and then if I actually hit the replay button now we can see we get a player up here at the top here and if I actually hit play that will actually play through uh, the, um, the session uh, captures, uh, uh, you know, each of the scans and showing us what was going on uh, for the duration of the, you know, when I was doing these the uh, scan of the network. You can actually uh, pause that. All of the filtering that um, uh, was was previously done, uh, you know, with the real time session, you can do here as well. So if I just do a very quick scan on B T, there we go. We can see any SSIDs it belong to uh, B T there that are in view. Uh, and you know as I say any of the previous filtering that we've looked at you can apply to that so you can imagine from a support perspective if you give a um, copy of WinFi or they download a copy of WinFi they can just run up um, WinFi in their environment 
do a capture for a few minutes, send you the uh, exported session file and then you can import it and you can filter it however you like to see what's going on in their environment. When you actually do the capture, the filters you have applied to the display don't influence what's, what goes into the capture file. Everything is captured uh, and so you can then just, as I say, import it and slice and dice the, the view however you like to start investigating problems or see what's going on uh, in their environment. So as I say, really really like that feature as I say it's another one of those um, features which in my mind makes it a, a professional level um, scanning tool uh, and certainly sets it apart from uh, you know many of the other free scanners out there for Windows um, so I think that uh, oh yeah I've got another really nice feature that I just want to show you quickly if you have to do network documentation and, and report on a particular issue that you saw this could be very useful to you. I've just gone back to the normal scanning of my local environment. You can see we're scanning now in real time on my local NIC. If I actually pause and then here, once you pause the scan you get a little save option. So if I click on the save icon there, what I can actually do, if I save this to my desktop, where's my desktop, there we go, uh, I can actually then save in a number of formats um, and my favorite is the CSV so at this point anything I have in the view any filtering I have applied ordering of columns that will be taken as a snapshot and exported in a CSV format which is great if you have to do some documentation you want to just pop that into um, Excel and do a, a little graph or a little table on it so if I just double click that now you see it's going to open up the CSV file and we can, there we go, we can actually uh, see all of the information we've got there and you could, you know, do whatever you want with that, put it into a report, create graphs, whatever you want to do with it but I really like that, that having that ability to take a snapshot of what you're looking at and, uh, and then turn it into something useful for documentation. Um, one final uh, killer um, feature in my book uh, I'm a big fan of the WLAMPI as you probably know and one thing that you can do with uh, WinFi is you, if we click on the uh, adapter uh, area here so if I click on that I can actually do add new interface and surprise surprise look we can actually add a WLAMPI as a remote uh, probe which is incredible if you imagine you've got a WLAN Pi or two set up around your network maybe different offices different floors whatever you can then just point WinFi at the WLAN Pi it will pull the data from uh, the, you know the beacons for, uh, that have been observed from the scans on its Wi-Fi NIC and pull them into WinFi which is was excellent from a, you know as a support tool so I'm just going to hit next next my WLAN Pi is next to me on the desk are connected to my network switch and I think it's dot six hold on just checking sorry for the delay six there we go do a quick hit the test connection we're successful credentials I've gone with default it's a new image test credentials that's successful so now it's fully configured go next so you can see now we've got this extra uh, Wi-Fi uh, sort of WinFi interface I hit scan actually switches interface just takes a few seconds to switch over to the, the uh, WLAN Pi do its first scan of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band uh, and then once there we go it actually pulls all of the data in using the NIC on the WLAN Pi uh, and we've got exact access to exactly the same features that we had using the local NIC in the laptop um, uh, and you know as I say incredibly uh, powerful as a, uh, a remote support tool uh, having you know having eyes into that environment using uh, a tool of this sophistication uh, which I'm sure you can think of many uh, uses for I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover I've gone quite long yeah nearly 20 minutes on this video sorry about that but hopefully this has been useful give you a good overview of the WinFi tool uh, give you an idea of some of the uh, hidden little features that uh, maybe you haven't seen as yet there's still plenty more we could talk about but I need to keep this to a reasonable length of video so don't forget get along to uh, Helga Keck's site and uh, download a copy of WinFi I've actually got uh, I will put a link in the uh, notes that go with this video uh, so you can find that yourself 
hopefully download a copy and, and have a have a play with it. I'm sure you'll have hours of fun. I know I have. <laughs> so anyway, thanks very much for joining me on this. Hope it's been useful and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.